Now that you have correctly installed the Windows Server Backup feature, you are ready to perform your first backup. In this lesson, we are performing a backup and storing a copy of that backup on the Windows Core Server. So ensure that the Windows Core Server is up and running. Back to the GUI version on the Server Manager dashboard, open the Tools menu. Then click on Windows Server Backup. Before performing our backup, let's look at the Windows Server Backup window. The window is split into three areas. The Actions panel, the Local Backup panel in the middle, and the Local Backup panel on the left. When I right-click on the Local Backup icon, I get a list of tasks. Backup, Schedule Backup once, Recover, and Configure Performance Settings. You can notice that the same task list exists on the Actions panel on the right side. On the Central panel, you have list of messages representing the state of the backup and recovery tasks executed on this server. To see more details about any task, double-click on it. You can see the backup location where the backup copy is stored. Here is the task's status whether it's success or a failure. Under the status details zone, you have the tasks start and end the time, the size of the backup copy transferred. If you want to see more details about the backup content, click on view list of all backed up files, okay? Under the status area, you have the status of the last backup. It was a successful backup, the time when this last backup was executed, and you can click on View Details to get more details about this backup. In this area, you will see the status of the scheduled backup, if any. In this case, we don't have any scheduled backup, so we cannot see any status. Under All Backups area, you will see the total backups performed on this server the date and time of the latest copy and the date and time of the oldest copy. And you can see the details of the different backup copies here. OK, now we are ready to perform our first backup. I click on the Backup Once shortcut, which will allow me to run a one-time backup. On the displayed wizard, I get the different options selected by default because I won't create a scheduled backup. So I click the next button. Here I must select whether I want to perform a full server or custom backup. A full backup will perform a backup of the whole server with the data, application, system states, etc. The backup size will be almost 16 gigabytes of data. The custom backup will allow me to backup individual folders, files, or drives of the server. Let's begin with a full server backup. I click Next. At this step, I need to select my backup destination, whether I want to store my backup copy on the local drives on the same server, or a remote shared folder in a different location. Storing the backup copy on the same server is not recommended because if uh, something bad happens and it crashes, you will lose access to your backup copy. A better option is to store your backup copy on a remote location, such as a shared folder on another server. I click Next. Here I need to specify the location of the remote folder by typing the path of that folder. I enter backslash backslash, followed by the server's name or its IP address, backslash, and the name of the shared folder. Under the access control area, I have the inherit option selected by default. This means that this option makes the backup accessible to everybody who has access to the specified remote shared folder. Select this option when you are sure the remote shared folder is only accessible by authorized persons, for example, the IT team. If you are not sure about the remote shared folder and who has access to it, 
choose the not inherit option. The wizard will prompt you to enter the credential of the user who will access to the backup copy. All other users without this credential cannot access the backup copy. Remember that as a system administrator, you must protect the organization's data to prevent notarized users from accessing sensitive data. I will keep this option selected and click Next. Now I will enter my credentials. I type the domain name. The user will be the administrator. I enter the password. On the confirmation page, check the options you have entered and if everything is OK, click on the backup button to start the backup operation. All right, the backup has been completed. I can close the wizard. Here you have the backup status. It was successful. You can see more details, the size and the items backed up. OK, now let's test the access rights to our backup. We have selected earlier in the backup wizard not to inherit access rights. So normally only the administrator can access the backup copy. Any other user will not be able to access the backup copy. First, I will try to access the backup copy as an administrator from this server. I open Windows Explorer. I type the path to the shared folder. Open the shared folder. I can see the Windows image backup folder. I open it. Under that folder, you have the folder with the name of the server we have backed up. And inside this folder, we have the backup folders and files. If I open the backup folder with the backup name and the date and time, I will see the backup copies with the other files representing the metadata necessary for the recovery operation. The first file is the main backup copy with 15 GB of size. There are other backup copies that represent the system state and other system files and other XML files that are metadata. Metadata is not a user or system data, but is a data necessary to the system to perform a task such as a recovery task. Windows creates multiple backup copies to allow us when performing a restore to select individual items to restore. For example, in some situations, we need to recover the system state without having to recover the entire server. Now, let's see if another user other than the administrator can get access to the backup copy. For that, I will use the Windows 11 machine. All right, let's open a session as a regular user. I created a user named Tony Stark for fun. I enter the password. I open Windows Explorer. Then I enter the backup share path. Open the shared folder. You can see the Windows image backup that contains the server backup copy. Now let's see if uh, Tony Stark can open the backup folder. No way, even Iron Man cannot access the backup folder. In the next lesson, we will see how to perform a custom backup.